This was an airplane. Wings meant to fly, an engine, precision instruments, 10,000 man hours of labor. And now, it's junk. This was the pilot. Here, reduced to statistics, case records, and reports, is the history of airplanes destroyed, wasted, and far worse, of men killed or injured. Here are the scorecards of carelessness and ignorance, the case histories of the final mistakes of hundreds of pilots, some of them students, some with thousands of hours of flying time. In the two years following Pearl Harbor, many more Navy flyers were killed in accidents than were killed in air combat. Stalls and spins alone killed almost as many flyers as the enemy did. And accidental spins don't just happen. They are caused by pilots who forget what they have been taught. One, the steeper the bag, the sharper the pull-up, the higher the G. Two, the higher the G and the heavier the load, the higher the stalling speed. Three, keep flying speed always. The steeper the bank or the sharper the pull-up, the higher the G. One G is a force equal to the pull of gravity, the natural weight of anything when there is no other force applied. In a two G turn or dive pull-out, you experience a centrifugal or accelerative force, which causes you and your airplane to weigh just twice the normal weight. The steeper the bank or the sharper the pull-up, the higher the G. The higher the G and the heavier the load, the higher the stalling speed. In any maneuver, the stalling speed of an airplane increases according to the square root of the applied G. Thus, an airplane that stalls at an airspeed of 70 knots in level flight, 1G, will stall at 140 knots in a 4G turn or pullout. And remember, the heavier the airplane is loaded, the higher the wing loadings, and therefore, the higher the stalling speed. Any airplane will stall when the airspeed falls below that required for the given attitude of flight. Keep flying speed always. The record cards show that more than one half of all stall spin accidents occur in landing approaches. Classification D1 covers spin accidents during normal landing approach. Here is a case history. This pilot was on the crosswind leg of his approach to the field. He turned too late and found himself overshooting the runway. He tried to line himself up with the runway by means of a 50-degree bank turn. His airspeed was 90 knots, and he should have had at least 10 knots more at that angle of bank. Midway in the turn, the airplane fell off into a spin. The cause of this crash was poor judgment. The pilot made too violent a turn too slow. When he found himself overshooting the groove, he should have gone around again. Classification D2 covers landing approaches, carrier and field carrier. While engaged in carrier landing qualification, this pilot came into the groove without sufficient power setting and losing altitude. When given a low signal, he pulled his nose up without adding throttle, and, in so doing, he lost flying speed. The plane fell off on its left wing. The airplane was demolished. The pilot was seriously injured. The pilot probably owes his life to the fact that his shoulder harness was properly secured. Another pilot, returning from a mission, made a slow gliding approach. A landing signal officer picked him up with a roger. 
But as the pilot continued to settle in a flat attitude, progress to a low and come on. Upon receiving wave off from the signal officer, the pilot jammed on full gun. That airplane crashed the deck. Why? Because it was trimmed for landing at reduced power. When the throttle was applied, the pilot failed to compensate for the additional power, prop blast, and torque. The common causes of spins in landing approaches are flying too slow on one of the approach legs, making excessively steep turns, or hitting the slipstream from another airplane. The next case history covers a spin accident involving a PV with a crew of six, no survivors. According to witnesses, the airplane was in a steep left turn at about 400 feet and at low airspeed when it stalled and spun to the left. The aircraft entered the water in a shallow inverted dive. It sank immediately. According to analyses, most spins following takeoff are caused by two steep climbs and climbing turns or getting into slipstream. This pilot made a normal takeoff but entered a steep climb out of the field. At about 400 feet altitude, he started a turn. At this moment, he was seen to enter a spin. He crashed near the edge of the field. In the opinion of the board, this fatal accident was due to the poor judgment and technique of the pilot in attempting a steep turn at low altitude and near stalling speed. The next classification covers spin accidents occurring during simulated emergencies and small field practice. In these accidents, Navy flight instructors were involved. Anyone can get into a spin anytime he gets careless of the speed or attitude of his airplane. There's no mystery about spins. All pilots know what causes them. They should know how to avoid them. And they must know how to recover from stalls and spins if they want to keep their health. But above and beyond all that, it's a matter of constant mental alertness, of staying on your toes. During dive bombing practice, the pilot of this airplane carried his dive too low. He attempted a snap pullout. The airplane stalled at high speed and fell off into a vicious spin from which it crashed. Remember, an airplane can be stalled at terminal velocity by a violent use of the controls. When you approach a stall and accelerated flight, you won't get all the warnings such as sloppy controls and buffeting that you get when purposely entering a normal stall in level flight. 